I don't care how much I'm bruised up, my spine is breaking. Yeah. I'm not doing strata mode. Yeah, no, you're... Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> guys welcome back to my channel this is a first generation Lamborghini Aventador the Aventador debuted just over a decade ago and is getting ready to be replaced there have been many variants of the Aventador over the years had the SV the S the SVJ of course all those had Roadster variants as well and this being the first generation it's sort of the most raw version of the car as you would imagine so as we're getting ready to say goodbye to the Aventador, I figured why not take it out for a drive and just see how it holds up over a decade later. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to see all my future supercar content, including plenty of car reviews to come. So in the Aventador, initially, it's a very different experience from your traditional supercar, I'll say. Everything feels much more dramatic and much more sort of grand. Six and a half liter V12, 691 brake horsepower. We are starting off in sport mode. It's the middle of the road uh, setting. You do have Strata, your default setting, but Sport is in the middle. And then Corsa, that's your track setting makes everything much more intense, gear shifts much more brutal. This is a seven speed single clutch transmission. Really one of the only modern cars that still has a single clutch transmission, like, like the SVJs and all the newest Aventadors. Kind of, you could say, dated in that aspect that it just is not as smooth as a dual clutch. I think it kind of adds to the character of this car. When it comes to the V12 Lambos, it's the engine that's always the heart of the car. It's always been like that. It's the defining characteristic of those cars. Yeah, I'm about six foot four. Okay, the hair, you know, that's like two, three inches. But my hair is, I kind of have to duck like this. I just move, I haven't had to move my seat tilted like ever in a car review. I actually feel like the, the Gallardo we were just in, the ride quality is stiffer than that. This is still stiff, you know, it's. <laughs> I want to hop right into Corsa mode. Right. I'm with that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Quite a lot different. Downshifts are pretty smooth though, I will say. Do have that all-wheel drive grip. It still feels quite big. You know, it's definitely not nimble like the Huracan, nowhere near so. And it still feels like a proper big V12 Lambo. It's just, compared to the Murcielago, uh, definitely night and day in terms of uh, ease of driving. Much more usable every day, even though it's not really a everyday car. I mean, you could. I know people who do daily Aventadors and props to them, because my brother in Christ, that is difficult. So this car weighs basically about two tons, and it does feel that, you know, she, she's a big girl, but once you open her up, Yeah, the shifts are immediate, 50 milliseconds, which for a single clutch transmission, that is very impressive. Obviously, if you're feathering the throttle a little bit, the shifts won't be as intense. Zero to 60, 2.9 seconds. Top speed, 217 miles an hour. It's carbon ceramic brakes. Pedal feels great as well. Turn-in is pretty immediate. And like I said, you do have that kind of all-wheel drive safety net. It kind of gives you a little bit more confidence behind the wheel, which you do need because this thing is still, you know, hefty. Visibility, I'm not even going to touch on that because you already know the answer. You know what I'm going to say. It ain't good. It's a very odd uh, view out with just the, the typical classic kind of Lambo, like slanted windshield. It's just very aggressive. But when you drive this car, it feels like an event, more so than really any other supercar, I would say for under a million dollars. The Aventador, it does give you this experience, this hypercar experience, that other cars in the price range just don't really as much. It feels like a true theatrical experience when you're behind the wheel. This is not the same kind of smooth experience that you get an F12. 
very different. I mean, like out of all the cars we've reviewed, like some about this is different. Like this is a this is a palpably different review to me it than all of the others. It has a road presence that rivals the million dollar hypercars. The car in front of us, when they see us approaching them right now, they are terrified. They move to another lane. They don't go. They're like, oh this no, oh shit, I I'm own getting this over. Lane. Yeah. One dude just drove into a tree. Look at that. Toyota smoking on fire. When you see these aggressive headlights coming at you, cars wider than a Range Rover. Yeah. You're, you're moving. Get out of the way. You're moving. We're moving. Revs to 8,500 RPM. Oh. It's almost shocking. Like, you do not need coffee if you're driving the event tour. Each shift is, is like a shot of espresso. Yep, it is still Audi based beneath, of course, so the electronics are all intact, everything works right. It's Everything's pretty user friendly. This, I think, will go down as one of the most iconic supercars in history. I feel like the Mercy Lago was kind of hit or miss for some people. People love it, obviously. But the events like are. It's like everyone loves the events are. You know, it is the poster car. That's it what. Is. That's what the you big. Go to your B12, book fair Tuesday morning, middle school. You go down there. Yeah. You're buying a poster of an event tour. It is the pinnacle supercar experience. Lamborghini invented the supercar back in the '60s with this the Miro. I really, I have no interest in being in strata mode. I will go to great lengths to not be in strata mode. All right. Put in Corsa immediately. I don't care if my spine is bleeding out of my ass. I am not going in the strata wow. mode. It's if you're trying to be like really chill, you know? But maybe. I mean but strata. 70% of the time you're going course. If you go strata, give me the car. I'm going course, bro. What I do love about the Aventador is that it's it takes a lot of it takes more effort to drive than say an F12 or a 458 or any McLaren really. It's a bit more engaging and rewarding to drive over basically all of its competitors. Because all the new cars, I mean, they're amazingly quick and it sounds very spoiled, but like, they're so easy to drive. To hop into a 458, you don't really think about it that much because it's just so easy, or even a Huracan. This compared to a Huracan, night and day difference. The Huracan is the easiest supercar to drive. I've always said that. It's it's just, it feels like an Audi that's just a little bit tighter inside and a little more angular, a little bit louder. I agree. This, as I stated before, it's just a little bit more, takes a little more of an effort to drive. Like, to hop in this car, you're kind of like, okay, I gotta like prepare a little bit. Cause it's- like, I have a headache right now from the shifts. That's a good selling point for the customers. That's not a bit, my head hurts. I've just been banging my head against this seat. <laughs> Don't worry, just take Advil. Yeah. Not okay. included. I think- Advil, um, Advil not included. Doesn't feel, as psychotically quick as like a McLaren, as I kind of always say, nothing really does. McLaren's always kind of been the king of that crazy surge of power. It's a much more linear acceleration. I mean, it is fast, obviously, but I think it's just the way it gets there, the way it picks up the speed is kind of eye-opening. This car is mental. I mean, that, that's that's what Lambos have always been. Absolutely mental. It's like, they're, they're silly. They're like, straight goofy. Uh, nobody needs this kind of car. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's for a certain kind of person. Lunatic. And, <laughs> Even just like the way this car starts up feels like an event. The way it starts up, it reminds me of like, it's just holding in all this rage. Like it's just holding it in. It's like like an it, it, Yeah, and then when it finally starts up, it just explodes. <laughs> and this spec, Aventador, and it's classy, the, you know, the tan interior. Okay, this guy's going so fucking slow. Turn in is pretty quick. It really kind of helps the car shrink in size a bit. It makes the car feel a little bit more nimble. Um, Ooh, a little verbal. She farted? And these are cars that will spit flames. <laughs> there are other cars where people might not know, oh, is it a Ferrari, is it a McLaren? Is it a Lotus? I get that too. With this car, you know it's a Lamborghini. That's how iconic the styling is. This was really the first Lamborghini, modern Lamborghini, where Lambo started really focusing on the handling. All the older Lambos were really not that great on a track. And not that you really want to track this, but like it's it was a step in the right direction for them. And now all the new Lamborghinis are just like monsters on track. 
right? The Parfumantes, the SEJs. This was the kind of start of that. When they started to really say, hey, maybe we should just take a step back on the whole, you know, scaring people into a tree kind of handling characteristics that all the cars had. You still get the Lambo lunacy, but with some extra sophistication. Oh, jeez, oh, it's just so... Like the car doesn't want you to be in it? It's trying to kick you off. Yeah, it's like a bull that you're trying to ride. It's like a bull. <laughs> Ferrari 458, it's fair to say, is a stunning car. Just flat out beautiful design. Yeah, it's beautiful. The big Lambos. They're hot. They're just crazy. Some a little edgy about them, but they're like they're so good looking. But there's some a little more. There's some more spice. They, they look like they look unlike any other supercar. They uh -huh. always look crazy. And of course, you get the doors. They decided to make the doors open outwards just a little bit more to make it that much easier to kind of get into. sometimes get along with but if you try and be like too much of his friend he'll like beat your ass and you know a decade later this car is still a crazy experience this is the first generation of incident right so you got the pre facelift version it's the most raw variant of the events now this is a 2015 so i believe with the 15s they improve the transmission like slightly so it's a little bit smoother correct me if i'm wrong but everything else is pretty much the same and so you still get that very just raw visceral experience analog experience i'll call it that compared to today's cars compared to like the aventador s not quite as refined the s really was a pretty big step forward in terms of refinement uh much better transmission four-wheel steering cars have advanced so much since the aventador this is this is it's an old school car now and i love it for that but thank you guys so much for watching if you like the video give it a thumbs up Subscribe to my channel down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Guys, what would you like? What animal? Like if you just shoot from the hip, you know, spitball in here. What animal would you say the car is like? I don't know, maybe like a donkey. Like a donkey? Why? Why do you think a horse? Like, maybe like a like a beefy or like a bull? Maybe like a bull. Oh Yeah, this car's kinda of like yeah. a bull. Um, I because, never thought of that. Yeah, because like when you're riding it, right? And we, we should let Lamborghini you know their cars are like bulls. Because I bet they haven't thought about it either, you know? Dude, they probably never thought about oh, that. Oh, dude, this is a million dollar idea. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'll send him a message.